Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and I'm here in Las Vegas at the National Hardware Show, and this is day one. We're gonna go inside, and there's 1,500 different vendors in there. I'm only gonna be showing you the stuff that I really find really cool, really interesting, so let's get in there and check it out. So we're over here at Work IQ, and this is Tom. Tom, you have come up with an amazing vice setup. I'm blown away. Tell tell everybody about this. I'm yeah, excited for them. This see. is the IQ Vice from Work IQ Tools. It's basically a, a vice that's built on a ball and socket, and that allows me to position the vice wherever I want. I can rotate it 360 degrees. I can angle it, and then I can lock it down with this cam lever at any of those different angles. And that um, combine that with the fact that we have all these different jaw offerings, we can work on a, a wide variety of things. And so, you know, we're not just talking about pipe right here. Could you show me woodworking? Yeah, for, wood, for woodworking. That's a lot of what my, my uh, viewers do. Sure. So um, for woodworking, you just pop out these four pins. They have little detents in them that hold them in. Great. Take off the jaws, put on our woodworking jaws, and then pop in the four pins again. And so you have five different types of jaws? Five different types available? of jaws. We have okay. leather, we have ones that are made for pipe, we have uh, specifically for pipe. These are kind of multi-purpose, mm -hmm. and these, uh, these work with, um, you know, like small parts and machine okay. shop type things. Awesome. So for woodworking, I would uh, use these. You know, as a woodworker, it's always that challenge of trying to get that exact right angle to be able to hold your material yeah. for, you know, the type of movement that you need to do. So this having so much modularity and how you can set it up is, is Exactly, awesome. Justin. Right now, I mean, traditionally, if I wanted to plane this, I'd have to stand up here and move my body to the wood. If I, uh, with this with this vise, I could put it down here, I could route the edges. I could do pocket holes right here, um, sand it on the other side, sand it on this side, paint it, etc. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I'm not pandering to you. That's really cool. You guys <laughs> have to think that that's really awesome. So in addition to this setup, there is also uh, accessories on here, your IQ system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I wanted to get some help, uh, like say working on a chainsaw over here, is this okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. Let's look at the if chainsaw. I, if I'm working on this chainsaw, I could take this IQ Connect. There are four ports, two on each side of the vise. And I just plug it right in, and I could position my light wherever I needed it. If I uh, needed more help, I could I could uh, get a magnifying glass Very here, cool. and you know that's awesome. So dial right into you it. You also have right here on the bench. Yep. You have connection points that you can buy, and you can recess them in. So like for right. my assembly table, this is very cool where, you know, I like having a magnifying glass sometimes for like some small work that I'm doing, but right. it's in the way a lot of the time. So if I have this modular mounting point, I can yeah. put it in when I want it and take it away when I don't. There are actually uh, four different mounting options off the vise. One is flush mounted like this. Uh, the same accessory can be mounted facing up. Um, we have a magnetic option here that can uh, be, be used under a car hood around the shop. And then we have a clamp mounted option that has two ports here and two ports on the, on the bottom awesome. as well. So Tom, where can our viewers find your products? Um, we can find them uh, on our website at uh, workiqtools.com. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them in a lot of independent uh, hardware, hardware, hardware retailers like uh, Ace, Do It Best, TrueServe, and Orgo Brothers. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tom. All right. That enjoyed was great. It. Yeah, enjoyed it. So Microjig is no stranger in my shop. I have many of their products. So I'm here with Ralph, and Ralph's going to show us a couple of the new innovations going on over at Microjig. Thanks so Great much for showing us, Ralph. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. So this is our new Gripper to Go product. It is an entry-level version of our standard Gripper. And basically for the new user that's just bought their first table saw or contractor on the job site who doesn't mm -hmm. want to bring his Gripper there, this is a lower cost entry level alternative that's very simple and very easy to use. Mm -hmm. It's not as versatile as the gripper, but it's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. One of the cool features here is that if your legs are going to encounter the saw blade, one way you can just turn it around 180 degrees and the offset will make the legs miss. Now we take it one step further. We've color coded the, the gripper to go. So we provide you with a transparent sticker that has um, that you put on your rip fence scale and when you set your cut whatever color is showing here should be facing you as the user so in this case a 5 16 cut is green we want the green facing us yeah, if, very cool if you move it 
then, and it's, let's say a, a one inch cut would be orange, I want the orange facing me, you'll never cut into your leg that way. That's great. So this gives you fle the flexibility, the protection that you need in a simplified package that's about $30 retail. It eliminates your blind guessing. So rather than having to sit here with your block first and try to make sure that you're not gonna right. hit it, the tests, you have this the color cut. Passed. Yeah. Now, this has been out for about a year, but we're just bringing out now the Gripper GR100 Plus. So this is our same gripper, but what we've done is we've built the same sort of technology into it. Rather than using a color code here, there's a scale on the gripper, and your center leg has a cursor on it that's see-through so you can read the numbers. But basically, whatever rip fence setting you set, that number should be on here and visible outside of the cursor. If it's not orange, you're safe to cut. Mm -hmm. If it is orange, adjust. And that works on either side of the blade. This is slightly wider than the leg, so we accept the kerf on both sides. You'll ne if you follow this, you'll never cut into your center leg. And once again, no test cuts, no check passes. You'll, you'll save a lot of money on replacing legs. And what you had also told me too is that this can be sold as an add-on if you already are a customer yes. of this product. Uh, this is included in, in all of the GR100 pluses that are coming out starting uh, next month, mm -hmm. but also this will be on our website as an upgrade. So this is a standard gripper. We're going to provide the, um, the scales that go on each end, and it's not so that you align the scale to this separation between the leg and the body so it'll be accurate enough to do its job. And then we also include the, um, the cursors, and then the hardware will also be included in case somebody has an older gripper that has the older hardware. We're gonna replace it all out. You'll have all the new hardware. Now, we're also gonna take a look at the MatchFit system, and this is a very robust platform that's been out for many years. They have, I would call it a mature platform because you guys have so many accessories oh, it's for constantly this type growing. of thing. Um, but you have some new innovations for this, in particular for CNC work, and as a CNC you know, hobbyist, I'll describe myself as, I know that my machine just wants to eat up whatever is holding my wood right. still. So, uh, you know, what, what new stuff do we have? So, just to, for background, so the MatchFit system, instead of buying T-Track and using T-bolts and all that kind of hardware, we use a half inch, 14 degree dovetail groove. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you can plow the groove, you can make your own tracks, your own jugs, your own fixtures, whatever. We have clamps that work in the system. We have a new ratchet clamp. This is brand new, and it's designed not to fall when you're in between uses. Very handy. Um, we do have hardware as well, and the hardware has led us to this CNC system. So we call it a work holding system because it will work on your clamping table as well, but it was designed for the CNC. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of things here. We have edge guides. Now, in the instructions, I show you exactly how to make a spoil board to fit your CNC. I tell you exactly how to build it. And you're going to cut this edge and this edge to give you a known location. Mm -hmm. This is our edge guide. It's going to slide in and it locks onto the, into the dovetail grooves. We provide all the hardware that comes with it. And I've got a screwdriver here. I'm going to butt that up against the edge of my spoil board, the cut I just made with my CNC. Mm -hmm. It's exactly two inches from that cut to that edge there. Okay, great. Okay? So now, all I have to do is whatever that zero point there is, move over by two inch and two inch, set a new home, I'm good. Yep. Everything works off of that. These will hold. We have two, di uh, two different side clamps. So this is a eccentric cam. Mm -hmm. But the difference is we have a center hub that doesn't move. Oh, great. So when I'm tightening and loosening this, it's not lo lo loosening my knob. Yeah, right? that's great. And then um, we also have what's traditionally called a toe clamp. This can move in and out. And then once I get it positioned, I can lock it in place. And there's a series of ramps here so that as I tighten this knob, it brings that forward up against the part. And so, then what you might not even be able to see on camera right here is it also has a V-groove in there so that if you're utilizing it on the corner, it's... Right, really just like this, the there's a lip on all of these that's only about 3 16 thick. Mm -hmm. But all of those lips are beveled back and downward. So any pressure is actually folding that part down into the table rather than try to pop it up like in a clamp, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. So that's all been designed and worked out. So if you want to work the whole top of a piece, like here I've got a juice groove that I carved all over it, no problem, your clamps aren't in the way. Great. 
We also include four of these, uh, what we call U-pads. You'll notice that they look very similar to our um, X-pads for the clamps, the regular clamps. But these can hold any piece from however thin you want it to be with a standoff all the way up to inch and an eighth thick. Okay. But the difference is that rather than just holding it from the top and relying on friction to keep it from moving, we've got a little notch in the edge here. So we're holding from the top, but we're also keeping it from moving side to side. We are preventing that movement. And so for heavier milling, this is the way you want to work. And it only intrudes by about a, a quarter of an inch into the edge of your part. So it's going to be out of the way, but giving you plenty of, of um, holding yeah. power. And if you are getting close, you can always set your safe Z movement, set it for two inch, uh, for an inch and a half, or I just set it for two inches off the top of your stock, your zero point, and your head will move up so you don't risk hitting the clamps by accident if the head goes in a diff different direction. So again, this was all developed for this, the home hobby CNC, what I call the benchtop CNCs. Um, we've been using it for, I've been using it for about a year in our shop as we've been developing and it works awesome. You know, the, the idea with CNC work is while the machine is the main driver of your work, if you don't have proper hold downs for your material, after a three hour carve, something can come loose yep. and your project is worthless. And I hate gone. double face tape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't it's, it. I mean, and I've seen guys, you know, use pin nails and all kinds of other weird things. It's unnecessary. We're gonna, your spoil board is not only protecting your bed, but it also is your holding system. And then you carve that out with your CNC, so you know where all the holes are, you know where everything is. This is a known location. I can put any size piece in here, and now all of my programs start from that lower left corner of my part, and I'm done. It just simplifies everything. And these make it, if I release this one here, these I like because they make it very quick and easy to release your part, take it out, put the next part in, and lock it down for repetitive actions. That's great. So you, in this kit, you're gonna get three of the edge guides. I only have two here because I don't have a lot of space, but one in one direction, two in the other, so whichever way you wanna support your stock, if it's longer, you've got good location. Okay. Okay, you're gonna get two of what we call the, um, these are called the ramp clamps. Okay. You're gonna get two of these with the hardware. You get two of the ring clamps with the hardware. You get all four of these with the hardware. Awesome. Everything you need to get going right out of the box. It's um, it's gonna be out next month. Retail for those? 120, okay. 199, 119.99. Great. All right, so I'm here with Tom at Midwest Innovations, and this is the cord dock. Why don't you tell me about this? Yeah, so the cord dock stores your cords compactly, okay. and then when you want to use the cord, you can very easily just unlatch the top. So instead of unwrapping it 30 times, you can undo it uh -huh. and then throw the cord in one okay. go. And then cord dock also stays with the cord. Okay. So it just folds down, and then when you want to wrap it up at the end of the day, you don't have to look for your cord storage. Yeah, because when you, you have just... those other separate pieces, you're going to have it somewhere else, and are you going to be actually using it when it's time? So... Right. So when you need it, it's there because it's always there. Okay. And you don't have to use your elbow anymore. A lot of the times, the simple tools are the best solutions. Um, how much is this going to be retailing for? So between uh, nine and twelve dollars. So this a very fall. affordable price. So yes, that's good. just a prototype. And then where do you think it's going to be retailed out of? Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Okay, yeah. so something to keep an eye on. Yes. Uh, why don't we pivot over here then and take a look at the drill dock? Sure. Is the drill dock currently for sale? Yes, it is. Okay. So the drill dock stores your drills, and you can put it on a bucket or you can clip it onto a ladder. So it's the on the go, grab and go storage for your drills and drivers. And it has like a lot of rubberized texture on here. So, I mean, our tools are rugged, so who really cares? But for those who do, uh, yep. you know, you're not gonna damage it. And it's tool. got a magnet strip on the side so you can have okay. your, you know, spare bits and to check your drill guide yeah. on the front. And then this little clip that you can clip it on the bucket. Awesome. You know, like as a woodworker, I immediately looked at this and I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, because I make my own sort of drill holders. But I really like for a contractor, the functionality to be able to hook it onto a bucket. It's the grab and go own. part. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And how much does this retail for? I don't know. You don't know? That's okay. <laughs> I will put it down in the comments and on the screen. We'll look it up. Right. Uh, but, you know, thank you so right. much, Thanks, Tom. Justin. I appreciate it. All right. So I'm over at Affix. This is a very cool attachment tool that really everybody can use. Stormy, why don't you tell me about Affix? Absolutely. Affix is a storage hanger product designed to create another layer of storage in your garage, workshop, camper, RV, boat, you mm -hmm. name it. Um, 
It's a simple T mechanism, so you push in and twist, pull it out. You can hang anything from extension cords, hoses, ladders, bikes, helmets, yeah. I mean, you name it. But the cool thing about it, you know, like I have one of my companies that I own, we have construction trailers, and so stuff's bobbing around all the time, so this thing does not come loose unless you design to, to go ahead and do it. So that's really cool. Um, how much do these retail for? For a box of two, it's $14.99. And where can we find them? Affixstorage.com. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Stormy. Thank you so much. Yep. I'm with Will and Jordan over with Push Pilot, and this is a really cool new invention that you're currently in the manufacturing stage, you're patent pending, so we're going to have to keep an eye on when we can start buying these, but why don't you go ahead and show us and tell us about this product. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the result that you get when you drill with a traditional arbor and hole saw. You get a plugged hole saw, Every right? time. Every single time. And um, this takes a little bit of time to remove. And this product is the Push Pilot. And it's a brand new arbor that Jordan invented. He's a plumber by trade. And um, he found his way to make his uh, job in life a little bit easier. I could explain how it works, but I'd rather just show you. So Jordan. Yeah, let's see it. Very cool. Does that ever happen, Justin? No, that does not happen. <laughs> Usually I need to pry that out of there. Right. So it shot out like a cannon. So maybe saves a little time if you're up on a ladder yeah. and trying to drill holes or something? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So if you're in the trades, this is obviously something that is going to save you headache, time, make you a more efficient worker. So basically what you have is like a spring-loaded <clears throat> system that yeah, so, ejects it mm -hmm. out of the hole saw as soon as it's finished. There's a few things that are going for it, you know. This is only as far as you'll ever drill into the wood, this 3 eighths of an inch. But yeah, that's exactly right. It has a spring-loaded internal chamber that gets pushed down using the pressure of drilling. And then as it comes out of the stud, pressure's released, puck's ejected. Yeah, very cool. Awesome job, Jordan. Very good job inventing this product. I think Justin, it's great. Thanks so much. Thank thanks so much. I'm over at Clean Boot with Paul, and you guys have come up with a better shoe covering, which is a staple with all tradesmen, anybody who's coming in your home that doesn't want to make a mess. Tell me about the Clean Boot. So we all know these so-called cheap and cheerful throwaway shoe covers. Well, yep. in our experience, they're neither cheap or cheerful. These are destined they to last. They don't work. They don't work, no. They don't work. They'll last minutes, and uh, and when they're at the end of their life, they can only ever be burned or... or, yeah. or I or, was telling Paul that when I built my house, a contractor was using these, but he had mud with little stones caked on the bottom of his shoe. So the stones went through that and scratched my hardwood stairs in the house. That's exactly right, Justin, because yeah. you've got like a fraction of a millimeter there. So, you know, if you've got any water on the boot, it's just going to punch through. Yeah. So our product's made from sporting goods grade neoprene. So it's got a lot of give to it. Yep. Um, four mil thick. So if there are any grit, if there's any grit or dirt, um, that's going to stay on the inside. If the boot's wet, that'll all stay on the inside. And we've got this patented carpet grip outsole. Mm -hmm. And as that wears, the grip actually gets better. And at the end of the week, you just take this off because if you've used it properly, it'll be dirty on the inside. Mm -hmm. Put it in the laundry, drip dry, and you're ready to go again. So if you're a contractor and you want to be a presentable, like a good person, that's going to impress your customers, and it's a whole lot better than using one of these disposable ones. One hundred percent. So, what is this retailing for? So we're at twenty nine ninety nine retail. Okay. And um, where can we purchase it? Okay, it's available at uh, cleanboot.com. Okay. Uh, or online through your local uh, industrial supply stores. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Paul. Thank you, Justin, and thank yeah. you for being gentle sure. with me. Sure. <laughs> We are over at the Trimex booth, and if you're watching my video to find something really cool and neat, this is one of the things that we're going to be checking out. Aaron, can you tell me about the Trimex product? This looks like it's going to save a lot of time for a lot of people. Of course, Justin. So this is the Trimex, the first ever string trimmer and edger that simply attaches to your push lawnmower, allows you to weed, trim, and mow all at the same time. So how it works is you take your two bolts out of your existing lawnmower, and you add our bolts right here, two bolts in. It's not just a trimmer itself, it switches over and can be an edger just like that to do your sidewalks and driveways. And then this can be retrofitted to any push mower, right? So any push, any push mower, so gas, electric, red, blue, green, yellow, it doesn't matter. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, you told me that you guys make it incredibly easy to change out the strimmer, or trim line, right? Yeah, so the trim line, just come, you just turn it to the edging portion, pop the cap out just like that. 
take the spool out, replace it with a new one, and you're set. And you have preloaded small spools that are really at a, a cheap price that you can put in. Yeah, so preloaded small preloaded small spools, two ninety nine. Take one out, replace it in. Awesome. Yeah, making it easy is great. Yes. So, um, Awesome. Where can our viewers find this? So we're at trimix.com. That's T R I M Y X S.com. Okay. We're on Amazon. We're on Northern Tool, Walmart.com. We're also in the stores at the Orgill and, and True Value. Okay. Awesome. And then price point. Price point is $219.99. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaron. Yeah, thank you awesome so much. Product. I appreciate it. So I'm over at the Industrial Clear booth here with Tracy. Um, Tracy, you have both two-part resin products that you can use for coating countertops and other woodworking products, of course, and then you also have some art resin. Could you give us a little demonstration and I tell sure us can. about your product? Um, yes, so we did start out with our product as art resin, which is a surface coating, a high gloss surface coating for artwork. And then we, um, the community told us that they wanted something a little more durable and harder for the countertops, charcuterie boards, etc. So I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to coat. Sure. Just So I have a demo piece of just a piece of veneer here. It is a two to one ratio for our harder cure. So I'm just gonna measure, kind of measure. Sure. And just while we're pouring in stuff too, for your two part resin for a consumer, what type of price point are we looking at? So our, this is our smallest kit, the 48 ounce kit, which is retailing for $69. Okay. Um, for something, if you wanted a bigger project for your countertops, we also have the 1.5 gallon, which retails for $159. Okay. okay. I always like buying the big ones and just throwing a pump in there. Yeah, we like you buying the big ones too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, resining is addicting because once you start resining, then you're going to be looking all over you. That would it, look better with resin on. That is. would look better. You know, a lot of uh, people who watch my channel regularly know that I hate painting. So if I do a project that has inlays and stuff, I'm going to, you know, color my resin and just pour it in there and call it a day, and it'll look a million times better than I Absolutely. could have ever painted it. So all I'm doing is mixing these two together because um, it's a chemical reaction between your resin and your hardener. Once over time, these chemicals will bond to create a solid, basically. Mm -hmm. And how do you find your resin as far as uh, air bubbling uh, inside? I'm going to show you the magic. Awesome. Okay. okay so as so we all know, that's one of the dangers of resining. Yes. Uh, that uh, if you have a good brand, you're not going to have a ton of bubbles. All right. So after I've mixed it, I would say for three minutes, but just for yeah, the sake. Yeah, of course. We're on video here. Okay. So. Now, all you're going to do is pour it on your piece. Okay. So normally, if you had a piece like this, you would want to make sure it's level because it is self-leveling, mm -hmm. and so it'll just spread out. So we do sell the um, accessory kit as well. We just move it on. You just guide it to where you want it to go. It will self-level itself back out to have that nice, even coating. And that's always great with countertops, of yeah. course. Okay, and you can see how it self-levels. Like I can put, and it just will come back in. So I can tell you right now, it's looking very clear. We have super minimal bubbles, and I'm sure if you hit that with the torch right there, those bubbles will immediately yes. go away. Yes, so now yep. our propane head torch. Yep. The main thing is that we're not seeing a cloudy mixture here with a million micro bubbles in it. No, so now this is where the magic happens. Yep. Once you have everything poured, you just are gonna take your torch and go over, and you can see the bubbles disappear. So awesome, perfectly clear. All right, fantastic. So where can we find your products? So Industrial Clear, you can find on industrialclear.com. If you're doing something more for the art project, like over at artwork, it's artresin.com. Okay, and then that's also in major retailers as well, right? Um, we're in big box stores, small little mom and pop stores. Plus we also sell online, Amazon, Shein, Walmart, michaels.com awesome great so lots of places where we can find it thank you so much oh, for yeah. no that's okay we'll wave high <laughs> on this one <laughs> so i'm over with john at gator magnetics and he has a really cool magnetic product that he wants to show us so this is gator magnetics our technology basically is in the magnet and this whole chassis we literally program these magnets to be able to hold a tremendous amount of weight so i'm going to connect this to thin steel this is 25 pounds of legitimate weight. I connect it onto that and voila, it holds. Wow, impressive. Now you're not gonna find that 
on regular magnets. But what's interesting is now you can use that on our wall system, our wall target system, which gives the ability to put it on there. Well, let's just do it again. Yep. <sighs> wow. 25 pounds. And so, John, you can put this on any magnetic surface. It doesn't have to be your, uh, you know, wall-based system that you sell. But yeah, of course it, you could use You can that. use this on, on pretty much any steel surface, thick, thin. It just depends on the coatings or the, you know, what kind of texture you have on there. And, of course, you have a ton of different products for this system. Your typical standard hook, though, that you're holding right now, what does that retail for? This hook right here that, that will hold 45 pounds will retail for about $23.99. Okay, and where can we find uh, Gator Magnetic products? Uh, you can go to homedepot.com, you can go to lowes.com, you can go to Gator Magnetics or amazon.com. Well, wow, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. So there were three days to this event. That was day one. I'm going to put out two more videos to show all the cool things that I found from the other two days at the show. Even on day three, I got to go up on stage and do a live interview and stuff in front of everybody. So that was pretty cool. That'll be on my day three video. Um, I have to say a special thank you to my brother, Doug. Uh, he flew out with me for this event. He's never been a camera guy before. He lugged around all my heavy equipment. I think he did a pretty good job. So thank you very much, Doug, for helping out with this video series. Uh, if you got some good content from it, if you want to see those two other videos coming out pretty soon, hit that like and subscribe button. That's what helps me. It'll also tell YouTube to show it to you uh, when it comes out. And if you haven't been to my channel, you know, put your feet up. Stay around a little while. I'm sure there's a couple videos on the channel that uh, will be interesting to you. As always, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next one.